A new report published by the U.S.-based University Network for Human Rights and Yemeni Monitoring Group, Mutwana, identified 27 airstrikes which were launched by the Gulf Alliance. Now, the Gulf Alliance is led by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, and the airstrikes occurred between April 2015 and April 2018. Now, the organization said U.S.-made weapons were likely used in 25 of the attacks in total. The 27 unlawful strikes killed at least 203 people and wounded close to 750. More than 120 children and at least 56 women were among those casualties, the report said. Among them was the April 2018 bombing of a wedding party, which killed 21 people and injured 97. Not included in the scope of the report was the bombing of a school bus in August of 2018, which killed as many as 51 people, 40 of them children. All done with weapons provided to the Gulf Alliance by the United States and the United Kingdom. The Saudi-led coalition has been bombing since March 2015, and four years later, there is a little sign of the end, with more than 60,000 people dead and 14 million at risk of starvation. Now, most Americans, if they're even aware of the U.S. involvement in Yemen in this battle, could not tell you why we're even there. Simply put, the Saudis don't like the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels, and we are helping them fight. But it's a stretch for any American politician to try and link to a threat to us here in America. In December, senators voted to call for the end of the U.S. military aid to Saudi Arabia's campaign in Yemen, though the then Republican House did not take up the resolution. The Senate is expected to vote again on the matter within the next month, though Trump's administration has already said it will veto. Congressional efforts to withdraw American support for the Gulf Coalition. So Matwana said it has counted 18 apparently unlawful attacks and 90 in 2017 alone. These attacks were far from military targets and caused harm to civilians without any little military benefit. These attacks are sadly on the rise. So as we talk about humanitarian crises around the world and how the U.S. is trying to help, maybe the first steps should be not be the one that's helping to create the crisis in the first place. Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this last video. We have a ton more great content just like this for you. So if you want more, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And remember, never stop questioning more.